Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. We are going to be ranking all of my tattoo machines from my least favorite all the way to my favorite. Uh, I'm not going to be going into any type of in-depth specs about this. I'm basically gonna tell you why I like and dislike these machines, what they're best for, and be moving on. If you do want to know any more in-depth information about it, I will leave a link to all of their reviews down in the description of this video, so you can possibly check that out if you're interested. So, starting out, my least favorite machine, where are you? This one, the CNC Q2. This machine I'm not a fan of, and I'm also not a fan of this company. They have really bad business practices. They try to bribe and deceive their customers into giving uh, five-star reviews so they can sell more product. But either way, uh, the performance was just as disappointing as the actual company because this is basically just a black and gray shader. Uh, no lining. Color packing was meh. But either way, it's just a very meh machine. There's a lot better machines out there for that price point if you want more so of a budget machine. Moving on, my next least favorite machine is this one, the Diablo Swiss. I bought this, I believe, like seven years ago. This was my very first rotary machine and it died on me in the middle of a tattoo. That was really exciting. Thankfully, I had a backup machine. Um, but yeah, I got the motor replaced but never really trusted it to uh, use it again in any other tattoos. So yeah, I just kind of have it as a keepsake. My next least favorite, I would probably say is this one. It is a piece of paper because I recently got rid of it. It's the Injecta Flight Nano or Nano Flight, but either way, I know a lot of people like these machines. I wasn't the biggest fan of it. I felt like it lacked power. I felt like it kind of didn't have the best construction. It was a little bit of like a junky feeling machine. Up next, I'm gonna group three different machines together if I could find them. This one, which is the Mast Lancer. I'm gonna group this with, this is the Bronc V1, I believe it's called. And then also the Axis Valkyr. I'm gonna group all these together, not saying that they're bad, but they're all kind of in the same group. I like a harder hitting machine. All of these are more so just black and gray shading machines. Um, they're all very consistent. These two are more so on the budget end of things. Um, and the Axis Valkyr, this was marketed as a permanent makeup machine along with uh, being like a soft hitting black and gray machine. It's not my cup of tea, but it is a quality uh, machine. So I'm gonna put all those together. They're decent, they work if you like softer hitting machines. Next, I will grab another soft hitting machine, which was the FK Irons Halo 2. This one I also sold, and that's why it's on a piece of paper. Um, I felt like I wasn't really able to get out of that machine what I wanted. I felt like I needed more power. Even though I was able to change the stroke to a harder hitting stroke, it still wasn't my favorite, but it was a quality machine, so it's decent. Next, we will get this one. This is the Hard Life. Omni version 2, I believe. Um, Hard Life, I don't think is in existence anymore. I think they went out of business. But the interesting thing about this machine was it went from one millimeter stroke all the way to five millimeters, which that's what attracted me to it. But once I started using it, it was, I don't know, it had really high vibration um, and I wasn't the biggest fan of the way it performed. It was decent and I used it for a while, but then I started using other machines and I liked them better. So this one, goes next to the Halo 2. Next, I would say this one is the Bishop Magi. This is the Nico Hurtado version, I think, of the Microangelo. This is number, what is it, 1,583 out of 4,000 that were ever made. So, it's a collectible. Either way, this is a direct drive. I forget what stroke this is. I wanna say it's changeable from 3.5 to 4.2, maybe. But either way, I do like direct drives. It's consistent. There's not too much to say about it with its features. It's very simple. Next, we're gonna go with another paper machine, which is the FK Irons Edge X. This was, I got this one after I used the Halo 2. This one had more power than the Halo 2, I believe. I was able to uh, achieve more with the Edge X than I was with the Halo 2. I was more satisfied with this one. Next up, oh wait, hold on. This one, the Mast Flip. I forgot to put this one somewhere down here. I'm not the biggest fan of this. This is basically like the knockoff version of the Axis Valhalla. It has the uh, adjustable stroke up here. It was decent. It was not great. I think that they should have focused on maybe like three or four strokes instead of all the ones that they have on here. So I'm gonna put this one 
like in this area, somewhere around there. Next, we're gonna go with the Axis Direct Drive. This is a really straightforward machine. It's a really hard hitting machine, really consistent. Maybe I only, I use this for like a year straight and nothing else. Big fan of this machine. It's just a direct drive as well, but I liked it better than the Bishop Magi. Up next, we only have four machines left. I would say the next one would be the Axis Valhalla. This one I use for probably like a year and a half, maybe two years straight. It goes from, what is it? 2.5 millimeter all the way to 4.2 millimeter stroke. So that makes this a very versatile pen machine. The most versatile, except for this one, but it performs better than the mass flip. But either way, uh, this is a really good choice. Uh, I know a lot of people that like this. I liked it for a very long time. I haven't used it for quite some time because I've moved on to different machines, but I still highly recommend it. It is definitely a quality machine. Next, I would say my next favorite is the Bishop Wand Liner. I really like this machine. It's a small, compact, very powerful machine. Uh, I really liked this and was attracted to it because there's really not very many uh, machines on the market with a five millimeter stroke. And this was just dedicated to lining, which I really liked. I like really hard hitting machines. I like to be able to get the ink in the skin quickly and efficiently. And that is what the Bishop Juan liner offered. Very big fan of this machine. All right, we've got two machines left. We've got the NUMA 4, which I just recently got, and I'm gonna talk about this in a minute, so it doesn't really go on this list, but the last machine I have is the Vlad Blad Avenger 2 Pro, which means that this is the winner. This is my all-time favorite machine. I cannot see, well, I almost just dropped it and broke it forever. That would've been terrible. I can't see how any other machine could beat this. It's really incredible, it's incredibly versatile. It goes from a 3.2 millimeter stroke all the way to a 5.5 millimeter stroke, which means you can get a very soft hitting machine or you can also kind of like get a jackhammer if you would like. I have a full review on this. I would recommend checking it out just so you can hear more of the specs because it is a very impressive machine. But overall, this is definitely my favorite machine. I use it daily. I switch back and forth between the Vlad Vlad Avenger 2 Pro and the Bishop Wand liner, depending on what day it is. So if I'm just lining, I use the Bishop Wand liner because it's very simple to set up with a disposable and a battery on the top. I'm very free to do whatever I want. Also, individual like manual stippling to where I'm doing like uh, a mandala or geometry piece to where I'm putting in every single dot manually and I'm not doing like the whip shading. I really like the uh, Bishop Wand for that. It's really easy on your wrist, but if I'm lining, if I'm shading, if I'm doing multiple different things during a tattoo, I'm setting the Vlad Blad Avenger 2 Pro up because it can tackle anything that you can throw at it. The only reason I don't use this for uh, manually putting dots in is because the back weight can be a little bit on your wrist, a little bit too much over time, but I do think that the weight of this can assist you in accomplishing a tattoo really well because it kind of just pushes the ink in for you. It does the work for you. But moving on to the NUMA 4, I just recently got this machine. A lot of people really seem to like it and I'm having a little bit of a hard time with it. I'm not the biggest fan of it just yet, but I also think it might be because I've only used it for maybe like four tattoos. A lot of people have said a lot of really good things about it and that's why I wanted to try it. It's a very interesting machine. It's a really interesting concept to weigh the way that they have manufactured the insides of this and also the grips, uh, you're able to get different grips for it. So this is the, the steel grip, which is the, a really heavy one. You can also get really light ones depending on what you want to accomplish while you're tattooing. But I'm still working on using this. I will eventually put up a review of the NUMA 4. As of right now, I'm a little confused on why I don't like it. And I'm a little bit disappointed because so many people talked about it, but I can't put it on the list yet because I haven't really fully experienced or gotten used to it yet. So I wanna give it a fair chance. So that's pretty much all I gotta say. Yeah, this bottom row, not a huge fan. This top row, big fan, except for this one. It may be in the future, I will like this one once I figure it out, but we will see. Either way, my favorite machine might be your least favorite machine and my least favorite machine might be your favorite machine. It really depends on how you tattoo, what you're tattooing, uh, what your hand speed is, what your experience level is. It all is kind of, you know, up to you and how you feel. So don't just take my word for it. Start to kind of try things out. And if you like one of these machines that are down in the bottom row, you know, that's not my fault. That's just how you tattoo. And if you hate one of these up here, and that's just how you tattoo. So 
either way, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Maybe you got something awesome out of it. Maybe you didn't and you wasted your time and you never want to see my face again. That's fine too. But either way, I'm gonna go home and uh, probably eat some food. I hope you have a good day. Comment some things or don't, whatever, I'll see you.